During our teen years, just as personality begins to stabilise, the urge to be popular reaches its peak. Why does the notion of popularity consume many teens across the globe, and how does this continue to have an effect in adult life? These questions can be examined through the lens of Regina George's character in the iconic high school teen comedy Mean Girls. The two forms of popularity. As young children, popularity tends to reflect another's likability. Young children are drawn to others who are cooperative and treat them with respect. So why is Regina, the embodiment of the mean girl, the queen bee archetype, popular? According to Dr. Mitch Prinstein, one of the most prominent professors in the psychology of popularity, the first form of popularity, based on likability, changes. He proposed that, in adolescence, something happens in our brains, the neurochemical cocktail of oxytocin and dopamine. Oxytocin, also known as the love hormone, promotes the need to connect and bond with others. Dopamine activates the brain's pleasure center and is commonly associated with the high people feel from drugs. As such, teens become almost addicted to any type of attention from peers, and the fastest way to garner that attention from peers is to exercise dominance, aggression and power, and that is where the second form of popularity is formed, and this form of popularity is grounded in social status. Consequently, high school popularity the type of popularity Regina holds is paradoxical. The most popular students are often widely disliked, as the traits necessary to maintain the state of being the most popular in the hyper-competitive and ruthless nature of high school are inherently unlikable. Although it should be noted whilst far-reaching globally, some cultures actively disparage these traits. For instance, Princeton studied the correlation of likability and status popularity in the USA and China, finding that aggressive behaviour was related to lower likability in both countries, but aggression in the United States correlated with higher status popularity, and vice versa. It should be noted that the form popularity based on status appears to be uniformly and universally experienced, it is only the traits associated with status which differ. This is significant as it illustrates that we, as a community, actively create the environment which influences the predictors of popularity by highlighting what we value. As such, some cultures are seen to reward other traits, such as the academically inclined, with status. Regina George, Aggression and Popularity in the United States Regina begins the film dominating the plastics, who are ruled by the colour pink, the primary colour of the film. Regina designates a social rule that the plastics must wear pink every Wednesday. Their attire symbolises their social status, with Katie adopting Regina's style to infiltrate the plastics, gaining membership into the upper echelons of high school popularity, their own secluded secret society, which before Katie's arrival, breeds a deeper loyalty and faithfulness between the plastics. Meanwhile, Regina's power and sense of belonging declines with Gretchen ultimately screaming, you can't sit with us, as she fails to adhere to her own code of conduct. The colour pink is symbolic of sexual purity and girlish innocence, which Regina represents the antithesis of, promoting the idea of social facade. Their clothing also serves to unify the clique, acting as their uniform. The social rules which the plastics abide by illustrate Regina's control over Gretchen, Karen and briefly Katie. As Regina replies, those rules aren't real. The rules in reality were always arbitrary. Gretchen and Karen were happy to blindly follow whatever rule Regina made up to retain their status in the high school hierarchy. Her popularity was never about likability. Instead, this form of popularity, familiar to many American teens, only serves to highlight a person's visibility, their dominance and influence. But why exactly do people want to be popular? After all, societal pressures and the mean-spirited social hierarchies in high school are not without damaging consequences. As Princeton suggests, we are hardwired to seek popularity. 
For instance, Katie vies for Regina's approval, despite hating her, and Gretchen chooses to be miserable within the plastics instead of leaving because the plastics are collectively the alpha group. She isn't interested in giving up her perceived superior status. Better to be inside as the lowest rank of the highest powered group than to be an outsider. The risks of seeking status-based popularity. Adolescents are at risk in trying to emulate or participate in this behaviour. Being hardwired to seek popularity like anyone in Mean Girls is not actually healthy. As Prince Dean asserts, the ability to interact with peers and remain emotionally regulated predicts addiction, dropout rates, relationship issues and even child rearing abilities. High status popularity may have lasting consequences. For those who experience popularity based on status, they grow up to believe that the way you get what you want is to be aggressive towards others and constantly attend to your social status, cycling through the patterns that worked in high school. The most popular students, like Regina, are less likely to have satisfying relationships, both platonic and romantic, later in life, and are at a higher risk for substance abuse problems. This is the notion of peaking in high school. So does popularity not matter? Not exactly. On the other hand, people that experience repeated rejection from their peers are at a long-term risk of interpreting situations based on their past experiences. If teens are repeatedly rejected, they begin to expect rejection as adults, as interactions with others in your teen years may shape and colour your self-perception in later life. Kids that had low status and low likability, constantly being rejected, often grow up to have the toughest time as adults too. Complete social outcasts, teens that were low in status and did not have the capacity to build relationships, enter adulthood with a shaky foundation, with their professional and personal well-being suffering. Princeton also describes so-called rejected aggressives, who were rejected but engaged in fights or had become bullies themselves, creating a vicious cycle of increasingly lowered status and likability which may be difficult to escape. As per Princeton, despite thinking you have outgrown the issues, you may still be hindered by the experience. The thing that's interesting, he said, is that if you speak with those who have those impressive resumes, who may have not been so likeable, and may have had some difficulties with their popularity as kids, they still feel insecure, no matter how many achievements they accrue professionally. They still feel a sense of inferiority, a concern about being rejected by others, a hyper-focus on potential rejection signals. Pretty privilege and popularity. When Regina meets Katie, she is threatened by her attractiveness. Beauty is the social currency at North Shore High. Regina, possessing the social intelligence to realise Katie's threat, invites Katie to join them in an attempt to subjugate her. Princeton acknowledges that attractiveness, pretty privilege, has correlations to popularity. Body attractiveness, which often refers to similarity to highly unrealistic societally promoted body ideals, is most closely associated with status popularity only. It is facial attractiveness, based on facial symmetry and averageness, which is remarkably related to both likability and status popularity. Via a complex cycle, research indicates that attractive people are indeed treated differently, beginning in infancy. Each new interaction, he says, offers new opportunities to learn, grow, develop, etc. Until there may be true differences in skills or abilities, including social skills, of some attractive people. So what to do? Yes, popularity is far more important than we think, with schools neglecting to explicitly teach us the social skills to navigate adulthood and facial attractiveness giving some people an unfair advantage. Teenage status is a strong indicator for how adult life will unfold, but your fate is not set in stone, it doesn't have to be permanent. It should be noted that social media only serves to feed the primal desire for peer retention. The likes, dislikes, followers, shares, etc. act as measurable data about a person's social status. We are in a status-seeking crisis as a society. 
There are kids who feel that their experience hasn't really happened until they have shared them and seen how many responses they get. It erodes our ability to make our own judgments in alignment with our values. It is important to consider that every piece of data says that this will make people lonely, depressed and at risk for relationship problems, as social media serves to only satisfy some of our needs, but not all of them. According to Princeton, even taking into account factors and other dimensions, such as socio-economic factors or IQ, it is our likability that predicts so many outcomes decades later. It's key to how to be successful in a modern day world. It is one of the most valuable social commodities. As a result, it is possible to recover from peer rejection as a teen by focusing on and investing in improving your likability in a genuine way by making efforts to try and do things that are attentive to others' needs and to show people that we genuinely want to interact with them, not use them for our purposes. The more likeable you are, the more advantage you have in every sphere. Princeton further adds that likeable leaders lead differently than high status leaders. Likeable leaders do a really good job of making everyone on the team feel valued. They do a lot of listening and not much talking. They help create group norms and group harmony. They make sure everyone feels heard and the end product has a piece of what each person has contributed. Our likability is a reflection of how much people enjoy spending time with us, experiencing positive affect or emotions and feel good about themselves when with us. In contrast, status is a reflection of our power, dominance and visibility. While social media and adolescence pushes us towards status seeking, it is popularity based on likability that predicts good life outcomes and status which leads us to poorer ones. In conclusion, Princeton's advice is this. You know that momentary high you might get by making yourself seem higher in status by disparaging others. It might make you feel good in the short term, but it's not only damaging to others, it is damaging to you in the long run. Instead, spend your time learning how to be empathic and forge genuine relationships, connect with people, become a better listener, focus on developing good friendships and being likeable, caring and connected with others. Ultimately, you may be better off if you are not the most popular teen in your school.